Another year of Advent Decode is nearly upon us, as at the time of making this video is just about one week until December 1st and the start of Advent Decode 2022. I am making this day zero or intro video to serve three points. First is to explain what the heck Advent of Code is if you've never heard of it. Secondly, to explain my video format for each day so you're aware of how I will structure my videos for the solution each day puzzle. Lastly is to go over all my base code that I'll be using for my solutions so that way I can explain it all at once and not have to worry about explaining it endlessly each day. Let's start though with what is Advent of Code? Well, as the name implies, it is a coding or programming advent calendar. Each day a new coding puzzle is released for participants to solve. Each puzzle will have two parts and thus two answers, and generally the second part will expand upon the work done in part one. The puzzles will progressively get harder and harder each day, with day one being relatively beginner friendly and day 20 plus being a decent challenge. This isn't an exact science though as making 25 puzzles that linearly scale in difficulty to the thousands of participants is next to impossible. But the rough guide I will give is that day 1 and 2 are generally newbie friendly and up to day 7-ish are beginner achievable. Then up to around day 17 or so is the novice range with the rest above that being in a more advanced realm. Again, take this with a grain of salt though as it really comes down to both your comfort level with the program language you've chosen and the amount of time you're willing to spend working towards solving the puzzle. All this being said though, please take away from this that just because you may struggle on say day 8, don't let this stop you from giving day 9 a shot, as you very well may find it easier than the previous day. And if you're learning how to program, use these tools as a way to get better. You can improve your programming skills and attempt challenges that may be outside your skill zone and just see what you can do. At any rate, I will leave a link to the Advent of Code site and the About page in the description below so you can read a bit more in depth on the points I just covered and some other things I didn't mention. Beyond the puzzles though, while they are great learning tools, there is also a competitive side of Advent of Code, as the site provides a daily leaderboard where the first 100 solvers of each part of the puzzles can receive points. Now, I write my solutions in Java, and while I'm quite good at it, Java itself is fairly verbose language, so the odds of me making it to the leaderboards for a given day are pretty small. This will be my fourth year of doing Advent of Code, and so far I have not earned a point on the leaderboard yet, and my best rank I've gotten is 239. I would love to make it into the top 100 at some point, but ultimately that's not my main goal or focus. That being said, in addition to the global leaderboard, users can have their own private leaderboards. I have one set up for my community, so if you'd like to join, you can find a link to that in the description below as well. Moving on to my videos. I'm planning on making a video for each day, and currently I do not have any travel plans, so I should be able to do all 25 individually this year. I will be doing most of the puzzles at midnight eastern time when they release, but there may be a few days here and there that I don't do them at that time, and I'll instead do them in the morning. But either way, the videos will be live as soon as possible, and I won't be scheduling them anymore. They will just go live as soon as I finish editing and uploading them. I try to keep each video under 30 minutes, and the video format itself will be in four parts or chapters. The first two parts will simply be me solving the problem in real time. I will try my best to talk as much as I can about my current thinking or process, and generally I only edit this part of the video if I go off on a bad tangent that I have to cut to stay around that 30 minute. If you're looking for more of an explanation of my solution and not so much of how I got to it, well the second two parts are for you, as after completing the puzzles each day, I will circle back and explain the code that I wrote and how it works to solve the puzzle so that I can hopefully help you fix your code if you're experiencing a bug or other issue with yours or to give you another perspective on how someone else might solve the puzzle. As far as the videos go, that's it. This is the same format I used for my videos last year and I thought it worked overall pretty well. Lastly, let's talk about my base code and the solution I'll be using to solve each day's puzzle. To start, I'll be writing everything in Java, as is the language I'm most familiar with, and a good language to use to teach and help newer programmers since, to many, it's the language they were first taught. Python and JavaScript are also good, but those are already heavily covered by others, and there's no lack of help out there. This solution is really just copied from last year, but as you can see, I will simply have a Java file for each day that gets manually commented on or off to be run. Generally, I will generate the day's Java file and then set it to run in the main method before the start of each day. As for the day's Java file, you will notice that they all extend this AOC puzzle base class. This is here simply to streamline the setup each day, as if you look at the base class, you will see a majority of logic is all done within the class's constructor, and it's really only doing one thing. It takes in the number of the day we are currently solving and attempts to load in the file containing our input for a said day. 
In addition to loading in the file contents, it also breaks it up into individual lines and then saves them all to a list that gets passed to the solve method, which is where the actual logic to solve the day's puzzle goes. Aside from some helper methods to convert a list of strings to ints or longs, this file also has logic for handling the output of my answers for each part while also conveniently telling me how long it took the problem to run. This is totally unnecessary, but I find it really cool to be able to see how long it took for the code to execute. Sometimes it's even fun to try and improve on those times and try and get them as low as possible. As you can see, this base code really isn't complex and is only here to avoid rewriting the same code over and over. Just treat these lat methods as a fancy print line and the solve method as the main method that is passed in the contents of my input file. That about wraps it up though. Hopefully you guys are as excited as me to see what puzzles we have in store for us this year. Big shout out to Eric Watzel who puts this all together and always does a fantastic job of making and running Advent to code each year. That's all I have for now. I'll see you guys all on December 1st for the first day. Thank you for watching. Peace out.